Fear is not my future. You are. I got, I need y'all to repeat it to me. Come on, fear. Fear is not my future. You are. Fear is not my future. Come on now. You are. Death is not the end. Death is not the end. for a moment to say thank you to you. Come on, he's here to meet you. Today is the day that we celebrate Pentecost. They say that this is the day that there was a mighty rushing wind in a room. walked into the house of God a long time ago and there was a mighty rushing wind in the room. Everything changed that day. Oh, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I forgive you. Come on, can you wait on it? Some 
things need to shift. God wants to unlock some things this morning. for me to lead you in a song but I'm telling you there's living water inside of you this viewer to God's able to pour out come on pour out you got it in you you were created to worship hey, come on lift your hands there's a mighty rushing wind oh. your breakthrough could be in that very lifting of your hands some of you, you're lifting your hands for your family. Oh, because you need a rushing wind. It's a new rise. Oh, it's a new rise. 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 Tongues of fire, it says, fell on them. here for church this morning I'm here for him spirit this morning I am certain I am so certain the word that God has given me this morning is for us would you lift your hands one last time father right now in the name of Jesus we listen with expectancy in the name of Jesus, I pray everything you want to unlock, that you would unlock. You are a big God, and you do big things. And I don't know what's attached to what you're doing this morning, but God, I pray that it would bring you glory. God, you're going to unlock healing today. You're going to unlock family members today. You're going to unlock salvation today. You're going to unlock breakthrough today. God, you're going to unlock so much. And I pray that it would impact eternity. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, amen. Come on, if you know the presence of God is in the building, say yeah. God bless you this morning. You can go back to your seats. Please grab your Bibles. Man, give it up for the worship team today. If you're watching online, I want to welcome you, and I do want to encourage you. You should have been here this morning because I'm telling you, 
Man, there's a powerful atmosphere in the house of God. Matthew chapter 16. When you're there, say, I got it. I want to thank God for my salvation. And uh, Pastor Tim, he's not here this morning. He is ministering in Carson City. Amen. And uh, also Pastor Paul, he is in Modesto preaching the word this morning. But how many know that we do things as a team ministry? Amen. The rest of the team is in the house. We want to welcome you. If you're visiting here this morning, welcome. Well, we pray for you. We love, if you're new here, lift your hands. I, I do see some new faces. Come on, look at these hands all over this place. Look at this. Uh, I would take the time and, uh, you know, we would greet you personally, but we just want to say thank you for coming to the house of God. And uh, if you were looking for a home church, this can be your home church. We would love for you to make this your home church. And uh, we are believing God for something big in Northern California. We believe that we are on the cuffs of a real revival in all of Northern California and abroad. This church is a base church. We have a vision inside of us to make an impact in the entire world. Mm. You guys can have your seat. Thank you. The home is so obedient. I love that. Look at that. I said we have a vision in this church to make an impact in the entire world. We're on our way to Mega. You're going to make me come down there. Uh. We're on our way to Mega. There you go. And uh, God has spoken to us. We believe that, man, God is faithful to his promises. You there? Matthew chapter 16. Okay. If you don't have it, we're going to have it for you on the screens. Matthew chapter 16, beginning, beginning in verse 13 to verse 19. Now, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others are saying that you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jodah. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail. I will give you the keys. Say, give you the keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone at that time that he was the Messiah. Father, continue the blessing of your word in Jesus' name. If you know me, you know that I cannot get away from this verse right now. It's changing my whole outlook on my marriage, the outlook on my life, the outlook on my ministry, what I put my hands to. It's changing my outlook on the businesses that I have. It's changing the outlook on Everything that I'm connected to, this verse is not letting me go. And I'm learning something about setting. Everybody say setting. Setting, setting is important. For instance, if I were to tell you a story and say that there was a man with tears in his eyes who whispered to his wife, I love you. I've always loved you. That would be powerful, everybody, or at least the women, back me up, say, aww. It's powerful. It's a powerful picture. But if I were to give you this setting that that same man was diagnosed with the disease that was going to take his life within the next couple of moments, 
And with tears in his eyes, he placed his hand on his wife's hand. And with tears rolling down his face, he said, I love you. I've always loved you. Setting is important. And for us, it, is, it serves us to understand the setting that was happening when Jesus made this statement. They say that Jesus did most of his ministry in Galilee. But it says here in this portion of scripture that he takes them to a place called Caesarea Philippi. Can you say that with me? Say Caesarea Philippi. They say that this was anywhere from 24 to 27 miles away. And that during that time, it had probably taken up to a day to three days to travel to this place. Jesus gets his disciples and he takes them away from what's common to them. They even say that it was 1,100 feet up from sea level, meaning that they went on a hike. How many want to hike with Jesus? Takes them on a journey, and he takes them to a place called Caesarea Philippi. And in this place, it had a reputation of a specific God. It was known to be the God of Pan. It was a half man, half goat deity that had horns. This deity was known to be the God of those that lived in the wild. He was known to be the God of oftentimes pastors that pastored sheep. Or he was known to be the God of those that were wanderers. He's often portrayed with a flute. And the belief at that time was that he would oftentimes lure the people in the wild with a catchy tune. He would lure them through music. He would lure them through something that was appealing. I actually have a picture of what this God would look like. I believe they can put it on the screens. They have statues dedicated to this God. Where's he at? Is he on there? Are you struggling? All right, there he is. Now, you could call it a God if you'd like. I see a demon. They have people that had claimed to have interactions with this God. They have another one of someone who drew a picture at later times, the God of Pan. And so this God was known to be the God of Caesar Philippi. What would happen is they built a giant altar to this demon. And at the very top, because this God would appeal to the wild that was in the people, He was known to be able to manipulate the mind. He was also known to inflame strong sexual desire. And so in the response of the people, what they would do is they would go to the top of this altar that they built and they would give themselves over to the wild on the inside. And so it would manifest itself in all kinds of bestiality, all kinds of lewd acts, all kinds of orgies, all kinds of prostitution, all kinds of molestation of children. This was their offering to their God. And so it was often known that they would, you know, some scholars say what would happen is that they would... They would have bestiality. They, they would have intercourse with rams or with goats. And then they would throw the goat off the top of the altar down to the bottom as a sacrifice. I have a picture for you. Not that. Shows the land. Show the other one for me. They would stand at the top and perform these acts. 
And as a sacrifice to this demon, they would then throw the goat all the way to the bottom right there. You see where the, the hole is, the cave? And it was at that time, water would rush from underneath the cave into the land. And the belief of the people at this time, scholars say, that if blood had washed up on the shore, then that meant that this demon did not accept their offering. If the blood disappeared, meaning that it went into the cave, they believed that it had opened up the place that they had called at that time the gates of Hades. The gates of Hades, some scholars believe, was an actual place. They would beckon this God, and you know the time of year that they would do it? This time, spring. During the time of spring, they would beckon this demon, and they say that it was the gateway to the underworld that would beckon all kinds of evil into the world. This is what the people were going through. Now, I want you to get this. Jesus takes them to this place. takes them on a journey to a place that godly people had no business going to. Jews that feared God, anybody who feared God had no business at the gates of Hades. Just like some people have no business. He takes them to a place and he asked them a powerful question. Who do people say that I am? Their response is heavy because you can tell that the disciples were very much aware of what people said about Jesus. They say, some say you're like Elijah. They say that they possibly said that because Jesus was confrontational. You know Jesus is confrontational? Mm. The same one that blessed the children, flipped the tables. Come on, somebody. If you're serving God for some time, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes he'll flip some tables in your life. There, your fear is not my future. You're singing a song and God's flipping. No, no, no. Let's deal with this. He's a confrontational God. Out of love. Out of love. Don't be confront people. If you don't have love, I'll leave you alone. Some say you're like John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the one that was confrontational. Elijah, they said, some say you're like Elijah because of the miracles that Jesus would do. He was a man that performed miracles. Some say you are like Jeremiah. They say because Jesus was known to weep for the people. It was a man of sorrows. Oh, but I love what Jesus does next. But who do you say I am? I picture Jesus locking eyes with them. Look at me. Look me in my eye. I know what people are saying. You know what people are saying about me. But who do you say I am? He will always bring it back to us. If we're being honest this morning, people are saying a lot of things about Jesus nowadays. People have a lot to say about people that serve God these days. They say all kinds of things. But who do you say that he is? I can picture fire in Jesus' eyes with passion in his soul. He's locking eyes with his disciples. He's locking eyes with the people that are following him. And he says, who do you say that I am? Peter breaks the silence. Thank God for people like Peter. He says, I know who you are. 
He says, you are the Christ. You are the son of God. You are the promise that we've been waiting for. You are the Messiah, man. I've been waiting a long time for someone like you. Jesus responds to him and says, you are blessed. You are blessed because Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven has done something. He's done something in your life, Peter. Something's been revealed to you. And today, in this day and age, we have all kinds of people trying to find their identity. They're trying to identify as this. They're trying to identify as that. They're looking for something. But I'm telling you, you're not blessed when you find who you are, but you're blessed when something's revealed to you. When you... When you begin, Jesus says, you're blessed. Why? Not because of who you are, but you're blessed because something. You're blessed because something's been revealed to you. And I'm here to declare to you today that his name is Jesus. He is the bride. He is the bright and morning star. He is the alpha and the omega. He is. He is the beginning. He is the end. He's the fairest of 10,000. He's still a healer. He, I'll talk to this. Uh, he's a provider. He, he's a chain breaker. He's a family restorer. He's my lily in my valley. He's the one that holds. He's my sustainer. He's he is my faith when I run dry. He is my river in the desert. He is the lover of my soul. He is the rebuker of my character. He is the king of kings. He's still the one that corrects. He's still the one that leads. He's still the one that guides. He's still the one that sets my soul on fire. He's still the one. He's still the one that gives me purpose. He's still the one that gives me destiny. He's still the one that gives me hope. And yes, he's the one that gave me my beautiful wife. And yes, he's the one that gave me my children. And I wish I was talking to somebody in this place that understood that your blessing doesn't come from knowing who you are. Your blessing doesn't come because of your gifts. Your blessing doesn't come because of your talents. But there's gotta be a revelation. I'm in love with the one that saved my soul. I'm in love with the one that covered my sin. When I walked through those doors and I had sin in my life. Don't look at me like that. You had sin too. Mm, there's none, none, none. There's none righteous, no, not one. You're blessed. You're blessed, but I'm going through trials. You're blessed, but I, my bank account don't show I'm blessed. You're blessed. I got sickness in my body. Listen, you're blessed. You know why? Because you know who he is. Do you know him? Do you know him? I think it's powerful that Jesus, he's so passionate about what he's saying that he commits himself to the work forever. Because when Peter breaks the silence and Jesus tells him, you're blessed because something about me has been revealed to you. Then he says, now I tell you, you're Peter. You are Peter. You're looking for identity? It ain't in your position. <laughs> yep. When the devil shows up, I can't show him my pastor card. Don't you know, I'm a pastor. I don't give you the anointing. I run the women's home. No power. The power is when you begin to realize 
Oh, it's getting inside of some of us. Yeah, we're getting it. He says, and your name is Peter. And on this rock, I'm going to build my church that even places like the gates of Hades won't. They won't prevail. They won't prevail. They won't prevail. He takes them to one of the most ungodly places. And he says, I'm going to build my church that even places, listen, the gates of Hades. I like how Jesus is saying something without saying something. You know those people? Pastor Ed was always like that. Man, he would say something without saying something. You left feeling rebuked. Dang it. I love how Jesus is saying something without saying something because he says, the gates of Hades. See, the gates always have been and they always will be a means of defense. Meaning that when Jesus says, I'm going to build my church, that the gates of Hades won't prevail. What he's really saying is, we are not on the defense. It's the enemy's gates that aren't going to be able to prevail. We are not on the defense in the kingdom of God. I know that sometimes it feels like that. I know that sometimes people look at you strange in your job because you say you go to church. But I'm here to tell you that you are not on the defense. It's the gates of Hades that... I thank God that in 1967, God gave our founder a promise that launched us into the offense. Tell your neighbor, say, we're not on the defense. Okay, I got to get this out of me. Got to get this out of me. We were never intended to be on the defense. We are intended to be on the offense. I will build my church. Now, the word that Jesus uses, do you, hear, do you hear his commitment there? I will build my church. Jesus is committing himself. I'm, listen, I love that he leads the way by example. This is about to be a life of commitment for you. You're going to have to deny yourself and pick up your cross. But listen, I'm going to commit myself. I'm going to be the one to build my church. I'll be the one to build it. That word build is interesting because it, it means I'm going to be the one to summon the people. Do you know why you're here this morning? Oh, please don't ever let that go. Don't ever let go while you're really here this morning. You're not faithful to the house of God because you're faithful to the house of God. Do you realize this morning that you were stuck in your sin, that you were a mess, that you were... Do you realize this morning that it was him that called your name? It was him. It was him that said... It was him that not only called your name, but paid the price to get you through. It was... Watch this, watch this. I am going to build my church. I'm going to be the one to summon the people. That word also means I'm also going to be the one to embolden the people. I'm also going to be the one to give them what they need to get through. That's what I'm going to do. That word church is interesting. Everybody say ecclesia. If you know me, man, this word is in my spirit. Because... Because it wasn't a building. Jesus never said, I will build my temple. And he did not say, I will build my synagogue. The word that he used was a body of people that had come together to enforce a governing authority. I'll do my best to break it down for you. I'll do my best. 
The ecclesia in their day, you had Rome that was an empire. And they would use their ecclesia, meaning, meaning their, their soldiers, meaning their tax collectors, meaning these people would enforce the governance of Rome. It was the ecclesia of the Roman Empire that was feared. How do you make it into today? A CEO will pull together the chief marketing officer. He'll pull together, uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? Chief financial officer. He'll pull together the different regionals. And he will enforce the direction of the company through his ecclesia. You follow? So when Jesus says, I will build my church, the emphasis was not on the word church. The emphasis was on the word my. I will build my ecclesia. You guys are familiar with the governance of people coming together to enforce something. That's why Jesus never really describes what church is. He describes what his church is supposed to look like. That's why Jesus says things like, you have heard it said, but I tell you this. It's like this in this body of people, but in my body of people, those that are forgiven much need to love much. You have heard it said that if somebody rips you off, you might eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you in my ecclesia, that whoever forgiven much loves much. I'll tell you that if somebody strikes you on your cheek, in my ecclesia, you the emphasis was not on church. Everybody knew what ecclesia was. That's why the Bible talks so little about church. It's because the people understood what an ecclesia was. But all of Jesus' efforts was to get the people to understand what his church was supposed to look like. Mm. I will build my church. And I love this part. I'm going to be the one to call. I'm going to be the one to embolden. I'm going to be the one to give you what you need to get through. But I'm going to give you the keys. Jesus, when he rose from the dead on the third day, the Bible tells us that he took the keys of sin, hell, death, and the grave. But today... Jesus does not have the keys. He gave it to the church. He will call. He will summon. He will build. He will embolden. But I'm going to give you the keys. Keys are a means of unlocking things. I remember reading a story about a bunch of POWs. You guys know what POWs are? Prisoners of war. I can't find the story again, but the story always stuck with me. It said that the battle was over, but there was this huge group of prisoners that were still being held captive because nobody told them the battle was won. Six months after war was over, a lieutenant walks up face to face with the guard that's holding all these prisoners captive with the papers from a distance and without a single shot being fired, told the lieutenant, the battle's been won. You need to let the people go. I remember reading that to that lieutenant's surprise, the minute they opened that gate, people came running out crying emotional moment they were no longer prisoners anymore they no longer had to be abused they no longer had to be kicked in their stomach or starved to death they were free now and i remember reading what the lieutenant wrote he said also to his surprise there were people that stayed inside He said that they began telling them, come out of there. They held on to the bars as they were trying to pull them out. 
Because sometimes people have a mentality that it's better to know, it's better to have a devil that I know than a God that I don't. I'm so familiar with my bondage. I'm so familiar with what this looks like. At least I know who I am. When they call me an outcast, at least I know who I am. When they call me those words, at least, at least I have some kind of identity in this. I don't even know what it looks like. If you start calling me free, I don't, what if I go back? They wanted to stay stuck. What if people understood? What if I understood? What if you understood that you have the keys and that the battle has already been won? And that all we got to do sometimes is show up into people's lives and let them know, listen, man, this thing's unlocked. There's freedom inside of you. There's calling inside of you. There's destiny inside of you. I don't know what you're waiting for. I don't know why you're standing still. But I'm here to tell you that there's a God alive. And he's called your name. And you may just see yourself doing one thing, but God sees a preacher. You You have the keys. What are some keys that the Bible tells us? You know, because it doesn't say in that particular verse, these are the keys. But you can look through the word of God to find out what Jesus says. What about the key of prayer? Did I, did I just cuss? I just cuss. Did he say prayer in church? Mm-hmm. Prayer. 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 The power to unlock stuff. It says that they were gathered together in one place and as they prayed. I've been in a room where the power of God done knock people over. I've seen it lay people flat, and I've seen it cause people to bow, but I ain't never seen a building shake. As they prayed, the building shook. That's power. And something was unlocked. Tongues of fire fell on the people. And as it fell on the people, they then went to go be witnesses. Did you know that Jesus' intention was never for us to use the term, I'm going to church? Because we are the church. We are the church. It was a completely different word. It was called a gathering. That's why the Bible says, don't neglect the gathering. Of the saints, don't do that. But the ecclesia was supposed to be integrated into the fibers of society with the keys. Why do you think that two weeks to four weeks, they say, some say possibly a month, depends what you read. After the day of Pentecost, they said they filled all of Jerusalem with their teaching. Because the people understood that they didn't go to church. They were the church on an assignment interjected by God into the fibers of society. And they were put there to, they were given the keys. I like what Billy Graham said. He said, heaven is full of prayers left unanswered because people failed to ask. What if unlocking somebody was inside of you? Your mind's starting to shift a little bit, huh? I can see light bulbs going on. I thank God for answered prayer. I thank God that he's given me keys. Mm, I wish somebody would testify about answered <laughs> prayer. Just this past Friday, we have a sister in our DTC. She comes, I mean, her, her, her daughter, who's 16 years old, correct, 15? She vanished. 
They don't know if somebody took her. They don't know if she ran away. She's missing for how many days? An entire day. Any parent in this room knows that that's scary. But we come together and we make, Jesus says, if you agree upon a thing, And this was our prayer. God, before the day's up, let them find that girl. God, before the day's up, we want the, we want, before the day's up, your word says, oh, I, there's something powerful when God's people go to God with his word, not with your emotion, and not with what you're feeling, and not even with your pain, but when you go back to God with his word, and you say, God, you're not a man that you should lie. But you said, if we agree, up, I unlock this thing right now in the name of Jesus. And before the day is up, we're going to get the call. And you know what was powerful for me? You know what ministered to me? Before she heard word, I seen her up here clapping and singing. I seen her at the altar worshiping God. When she doesn't know where her daughter is at. Praising God anyway, worshiping God anyway, pushing through anyway. But after service, I'm telling you, I walk up and she's smiling ear to ear. And I said, what happened? She said, she found her. They found her. She's back. I... Prayer. 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 Do we believe in prayer anymore? I'm talking about getting up in the morning and before you go to work, you spend an hour of prayer. Oh no. I'm tell I could go through like 15 keys. I got them, but I'm not going to do it. I, we got all kinds of keys. Some of you, some of, God has equipped us with keys, but some of you, you're a key. You're here today because God's looking to unlock your family. You're here today because there's a preacher in that little kid. And you don't realize that being faithful to God, God's doing something in your bloodline. We learned that from Ruth. Ruth was just had the right posture, was just trying to be faithful to God. She didn't realize that there was a King David in her womb. Attached to her blood. Sometimes it's just your posture. Power of prayer. Do we still believe in that? What about showing up an hour early before service? Oh, they don't like me today, Sister Mitzi. Look at me. I love you. But it shouldn't be just the homes up here praying. An hour before service. Those of you that graduated the home, it was a principle that was supposed to be put inside of you that you carried the rest of your life. What happened? What happened to people coming with a burden before service? Oh, God, I'm sorry if I'm hurting your feelings, but I'm really not because I'm trying to give you a principle that's going to help you. You don't know how to pray? Come an hour before service. It's a good time to hear. They were together praying in one place and the building shook. I was talking to a sister this morning in the green room. Burdened. Burdened. Because she's here serving God, but her son is on fentanyl. If, if, we, if we really could grasp this key that we can bring things to him and unlock stuff. <laughs> Jesus said, you're the salt and light of the world. You know what that means? That means that salt, when you, when you look into it, salt has no impact unless 
it actually touches whatever it's trying to bring flavor out of. The church was never intended to be a people in a corner somewhere praying that the world would change. That is not his vision. His call has never been for his church to be conjured up just praying God change the world. Yes, there is power in prayer, but salt has to be up close and personal to whatever it's... <laughs> proximity. If we are a church that understands the needs and have the answer to those needs, what if I told you that there are things at your job and you don't even realize there are people at your job that you are supposed to be on assignment for? You're... There's pain all around you. Our job, Jesus gives us job descriptions. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to build, but I'm going to give you your job description. You need to go and unlock. Just like the prisoners of war that are there stuck, you're supposed to show up with the paper. Listen, the battle's been won. What are some things that stop people from doing this? I don't have it all together. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Mm, who feels like that sometimes? I just cussed last week at work. How am I going to tell this person about Jesus? You can look at me like that all you want, but I know you people. I, I'm with you. Did you know that it's not your message to hold back? I don't see, I don't see, I don't see all the throngs of people surrounding Jesus and everybody getting it together and then they go to take the world. I see all kinds of people that are still trying to get it together, but they, they know the one that changed everything. And I don't have all the answers, but I can tell you. I can tell you that Manny makes a difference. And I know if you look at me, you know, I don't got it all together yet, but I, I can tell you the one, man. I'm, t I'm telling you, please, just come. Just, just come because there's something that God wants to unlock inside of you. You'd... When was the last time that you've been up close and personal with someone's pain? Burdened. I'm burdened this morning over your son. We need to unlock that kid. We need to unlock that. That's a 30-year-old kid that's stuck, and he just doesn't know yet. What if two or more? What, I, I make a commitment to pray for that kid. I made a commitment to pray for you when you got saved. I've prayed for you every day, Craig. But you want to know what I've prayed for this guy? God, unlock that man. There's something inside it. And he's sitting here. He's sitting here. Through the discipleship. That he... It's handled in prayer. It's handled in prayer. Your loved ones, your family members, your children, it's handled in prayer. I wish, I wish we would. You could unlock, if I gave you keys today, the way God's word gives you keys, if we gave you keys today and you could unlock anything in your family or you could unlock anything in your life, what would you go for? Everybody's standing. We'll call the worship team out. I am certain of this. Something's going to unlock on a whole nother, on a whole nother level, some of you have the anointing to unlock healing in people. I thank God for people like Tony and, and his wife that start the deliverance meeting because they got keys to unlock inner healing. We are the church. The church, your eyes, my eyes, were never intended to be focused here. You and I, our focus is to be outward. 
There's this one rapper. I, his verse always stuck with me. He goes, it's called selfism. It's the fastest growing religion, but we just dress it up and call it Christian. It's called selfism. It's the fastest growing religion, but we just dress it up and call it Christian. It's not about you. Can God meet your need? Yes. Does God love you? Yes. Can God, does God know your pain? Yes. Can God heal you? But what if this was our leadership team and your eyes were not focused here, but your eyes were focused on the people that are in front of you as you're integrated into society. What if? What would happen? What would happen if the people you're connected to came in? Some of you, you, you don't even realize that you're a key. As I'm talking to you now, I know for sure the Spirit of God is prompting you. The same way that Jesus told Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, something's being revealed in your spirit right now. You are called. You are separated. You are not dead because of the call that is on your life. You have been rescued. There is something supernatural about you. There is something mega about you. There is something impactful about you. There is hope inside of you for dying people and I know it doesn't feel like that sometimes but I'm telling you if you just get back into the posture of prayer man go ahead and come up you want to come up come up we're going to unlock some stuff some of you my sister I'm, I'm going to pray for your boy we're going to do that today if you have things that are going on and you need God to meet your need I'm telling you we, we got the authority Come on, lift those hands. Come on, we want, we need prayer. I'm talking about fire in your soul kind of prayer. Come on, not religious prayer, not God this side. Don't go into your prayer the same way you always do. There's got to be a different posture on the inside of us. Say, hey, that unlocks stuff in the name of Jesus. Yeah, there's anointing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come on, don't wait for me. Don't wait for me. Lift your hands. Lift your voice. Oh, shakalabaso.
Go ahead, lift your voice. Come on. They gather together and they pray. Come on, turn this whole place into a prayer meeting. Come on, you have authority. You were called. You said you would give us the treasures at Shaka. Come on, don't be afraid. You can pray in tongues. Hey! Come on, unlock that thing. Some of you, if you have addiction, lift your hand. God's going to break it off of you. We unlock in the name of Jesus. I unlock. The anointing of the Lord breaks every yoke of bondage. Strong. 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 The anointing of the Lord. God, strong enough to break every yoke. Hear me, if you're a parent, if you're a parent in this place and you're like my sister that needs your children unlocked, they're in addiction, Sister Veronica, get up here. I know we're praying for your boy too, right? I want you to come up here. We want, I want to just agree with you. Father, mother, come on, we're praying for your kids. Come on, come on, get up here. Get up, come on, we're going to shift this thing. They don't even realize, come on, Tanya, you can come through, come through, come through. Right there, that's good, that's good. Come on, come on, there's something powerful about to happen. Yeah. There is no weeping like the weeping of a mother. And there is no weeping like the weeping of a dad. For some of you, man, your children's lives are at stake. Fentanyl has totally changed the game. Let there be a cry that comes from the house of God. Oh, come on. There it is. Come on. It's not going to be in my prayer for you. It is in your prayer. Hey. Oh, God. In Jesus' name. Hey. Come on. Start to declare over them. Come on. Start to declare freedom. Oh, I declare freedom in the name of Jesus. We declare freedom over her son in the name of Jesus. I come in agreement. Oh God, we come in agreement. You're going to save that boy. You're going to rescue that boy. You're going to break through even now. take authority in the name of Jesus come on take authority over addiction we take authority in the name of Jesus we declare that the anointing of the Lord that it breaks every stronghold in the name of Jesus I declare that depression has to flee I declare that no suicide is gonna happen I declare in the name of Jesus you're gonna raise them up The anointing of the Lord is upon me. It's anointed me to preach the good news of the poor. It's anointed me to proclaim liberty to the captive. It's anointed me to lay hands on the eyes that the blind would see. He's anointed me. Come on, lift your hands. Shakan of us so. Oh, come on, Allah. 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 
take authority. Oh, God, your word is true. Let it change the world. Come on, something's happening. Stay there. We are the church. And we declare. Come on, don't stop. Yeah, you're an intercessor. Oh, you're an intercessor. You're an intercessor. You always have it. Lift your hands. I don't know what you're here for. But I'm going to agree with you. Jesus. He hears you. Oh, Jesus. Power of God. He hears you. Let that call. Jesus. Let us stir. We need you to unlock our kids. Some of you, you need inner healing. Lift your hands. God's going to let that fall off of you now. Because oh, he's a champion. Oh, you're going to feel like breaking. I want to let you know. Go ahead. Let the tears flow. There's inner healing happening now in the name of Jesus. You're going to let it go. Come on, let it go. You feel the warm oil on the inside of your soul. That's the anointing oil of the Lord. You're being healed on the inside. Oh, in the name of Jesus. your hands, Ray. There's a 
deep cry in you, Ray. have a child you're praying for, Ray? You have a child you're praying for? I want to just agree with you. It's going to be so good. Oh, declare salvation. It's going to bring joy in life. Like never before, there's going to be a burn. Oh, going to be a burning on the inside of them. Come on, we're getting work done. Come on, start to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's going to be good. There's going to be joy in her soul. Some of you, God's given you a glimpse. He's given you a glimpse of your child saved or whatever you're trying to unlock. And right now is a real good time to start thanking God in your own words and start to thank God. Hallelujah. your help real quick. We still serve a God who heals. But if you have sickness in your body, I want you to make your way up here real quick. Make it quick, please, right here. We got our sister here who's still battling this thing. My God, look at all you. Come up here. My God. There is power and authority in the name of Jesus. If you're up here for healing, lift your hands just so I can see you clear. Maybe Sister Mitzi, I, I just want to pray for her. Uh, I want to pray for her. Um, maybe, maybe just lay hands on her and pray in the mic.
Father, Lord God, in your presence, Lord. Father, we take the keys of healing that were given to us, God. Father, when they were given to us, we are the church. And right now, Father, we move in the power of the church in us, oh God. And your word says, oh God, that we, if there is sick among us, Lord, that we could call the elders of the church, Lord, and they would lay hands upon the sick, Lord God. Lord, and that the sick would be healed, God. Father, and we unlock that now, God. We walk boldly into the throne room of heaven, God. Together, God, as the church of Jesus, as a part of the body of Christ, Lord God, that was broken for our healing, God. And we ask you, Father, to breathe on these, God, who have come up here by faith. They believe by faith they are in the church. They are the church, God. And as we surround them, Lord Jesus, we know that you are working in them, God. You are working in their body, God. You are speaking in their body, God. Your blood, God, is flowing through their body even now, God. You are expelling, oh God. You are speaking, Father, over their lives, Jesus. Speak over their bodies, Father. You are the healer. You are the healer, Lord. You are the healer, Father. Father, you spoke and the dead came alive, God. You spoke, oh God and breath came back into their lungs, God. You speak, Father, and cancer has to leave. You speak, oh God, and blood flow is opened, oh God. You speak, Lord Jesus, this morning, and all of diabetes and anxiety has to leave, God. Father, Lord, you speak this morning, God, and we speak, Father, as a church today, God. We take your word that was preached to us today, God, and we speak healing over our sisters and our brothers, Father. We speak healing over our sons and our daughters. We speak healing over our mothers and our fathers. We speak healing, God, that is going to just outflow, God, from the church, Jesus. This is the church of Jesus. This is the house of Jesus. Jesus, you live in us. Jesus, cried the leper, God. Jesus, son of David. Jesus, have mercy, Jesus. And you turned around and you looked this morning, Jesus. Look upon God. Look, Lord Jesus. 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 Yeshua. Jesus. Elohim. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah our banner. There is healing power. We are the church. We are the church of Jesus. Let us live up to that, oh God. Let us God and let us live through that oh God we live in that right now we live and move and have our breathing God our breath comes from you God our body our life comes from you God <clears throat> and we speak healing as the church we release the church we are the church Jesus we are the church in this city God oh healing be loosed oh God all temptation is cast down all bondages are broken in Jesus name all chains are released in the name of Jesus all addiction is broken in the name of Jesus marriages are put together in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we are the church God, and we speak, we speak Jesus this morning, God. We speak Jesus. It's all you, God. It's nothing with us, God. It's 
all you, Jesus, this morning, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Breathe your Holy Spirit, God. Breathe your Holy Spirit. Breathe. One last call. You are not released. You're not loosened. You're not unlocked unless you're first saved. There was a price that was paid for you. And I don't know if you know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, but I'm telling you it's the best thing you could ever do with your life. If you want to give your life to the Lord, Go ahead and lift your hand real high. Come on, brother. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. I see hands back there, too. Come up here, sis. We're just going to pray for you. No, we're not going to embarrass you. I see your hands. Lift your hands. This is your moment. Close your eyes. You're going to sense the presence of God come over you. Nobody moving, please. Nobody moving. You can sense a peace coming over you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He can meet you right there where you're at. Glory to God. Would you repeat after me? To say, Jesus, I know you died on a cross for me. I know you rose again but I want to know you I lift my hands come into my life be my Lord be my Savior right now I give my life to you Jesus lift the burden God half yokes. You came to break them all. Jesus. Let the kingdom of God come into the soul of God. Let a light go on. grip is broken. I declare in the name of Jesus. Addiction is broken. It'll never be the same after today because of the blood. Wash us. Wash us in the blood. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. God's washing you. It's on the inside. It's a deep work. Stay right where you are. There's a promise in God's word that says you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When you receive Jesus, God's spirit comes to live in you. But there's also an infilling of the Holy Spirit that is promised to us. You have God's spirit in you, but you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And that's what gives you power to be the church out in the world. That's what's gonna give you power today. Some of you will leave here today and you may walk back into an unsaved environment, 
into people that don't know that you're changed people that don't know that you came this morning so you need power so we're going to ask the holy spirit to fill you and i want all of you that are filled already with the holy spirit you just lift raise your hands point them this way in agreement and there's a lot of new ones today that need the power they need to be successful in jesus they need to know that he has filled them the devil cannot come he cannot move you he cannot steal from you because you will be covered you will have the power of the holy spirit and so we're going to ask for the holy spirit that you may feel something wanting to come out of your belly you may feel like you want to cry you may feel like you want to speak in an unknown language that's the power of the holy spirit this is a pentecostal church we believe in the speaking in tongues as the power the evidence of the holy spirit power coming upon us and it's in the bible those are the tongues that he spoke about so we are right now you just release remember you are the church you are the church jesus lives in you he lives in you so don't fight it don't feel that you don't deserve it in the name of jesus father right now father we ask lord jesus that the power of your holy spirit oh god father i ask for the infilling and the baptism of the holy spirit fire god to fall upon these god that have received you today as their lord and savior your word says god that we would receive power after the holy ghost would come upon us lord and we would be baptized father with fire baptized oh god and i pray right now father i pray that there would be an infilling of your spirit i pray right now father that your holy ghost father would just fall upon them would fall upon them and give them power god they need power they need power lord jesus they need power god they can't make it without your power god we need your presence lord we need your power david lay hands on this gentleman here let's pray father lord i ask that your holy spirit oh god i ask for your holy spirit to come upon this man right now god i ask you lord that the evidence of speaking in tongues god would fill him god father he would burst forth god he would not be afraid or ashamed god or feel that he does not deserve father he is forgiven he's washed in the blood god and now father he needs that infilling of the holy spirit over his life god i ask you father to just speak father over his life oh god and you fill him lord you fill him with your spirit oh god we thank you father
Stay there, please. We're going to go ahead and let you go in just a moment. But before you do, I'm going to call up the Director's Training Center because this is their last service. Come up here quickly, please. We're going to be blessing them out today. Come on up here, line up, please. If anybody's going to have to live this sermon, it is them. Many of them are leaving today, tomorrow, and the next. Um, some of them are going to be staying with us for a few more months. Some of them are taking over a home in the next couple days. We got Sister Christina on her way to another country to run a home. Yeah, they're going to be the church. They're, they're going to live with people and they're going to mend pain. Would you guys lift your hands? The anointing of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed you to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Your hands are going to touch pain. And there is going to be a supernatural ointment on you to mend the broken, recovery of sight to the blind, healing in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for their commitment. Oh, help them. Help them, God. You promised us treasures out of darkness. And our prayer, God, is that these ones with their hands lifted, the treasures that are darkness would come into their hands and that you would give them the words that you would give them the unction and the power of the Holy Spirit that you would break chains through them God you call them to be the church the ecclesia and they have authority and they have dominion they unlock purpose in people you're going to unlock families through them you're going to unlock nations through them you're going to unlock healing through them Father, just as a church, we bless them out today. Pray that as they leave here in these next couple days, that God, you would guide every step. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. In Jesus' name. church Jesus Lord let us take this wherever we go God to our workplace to our families to the store to the streets we know that you have anointed us you have called us God and we just ask that you just seal this word within our hearts here today you have given us the keys Jesus you have given us the authority Jesus we thank you in your mighty, powerful, matchless name, Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus praise. Praise. Well, you can just go ahead and stay right there. We're going to go ahead and conclude. And man, what a service, man. What a powerful time. And again we want to thank you for joining us here today and even those that are online as well and um we're going to get ready to conclude here to today so maybe go ahead and just remain standing with me and want to remind everyone just this weekend for all the women and gang girls amen code red we have the opportunity to have the opportunity to go and be the church right there in the city of sacramento let them know about the love of jesus come on woman make some noise 
ahead and just conclude. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, we, we come to you once again. We thank you for this service, God. We thank you for what took place today, God. We know that there were healings, God, and miracles and salvation that took place here today. And Lord, we just pray that you just continue to be with us, God. And once again, let this word just be sealed within our hearts, God, within our spirits, Lord God. We are the church, God, and I pray that we will walk in it. Wherever, that, wherever we may go, let us walk in that authority. Lord, we just pray that you would just be with us this entire day and for the rest of the week. We thank you and we love you. In the mighty, match name, Jesus. Amen. And amen. You may consider yourself dismissed.